smaller island in it, an island on an island, wonderfully sheltered and calm. What is this? I asked. Chris did it. Chris was her ex-boyfriend. They were childhood friends and he died from cancer just just before she left for Princeton. Yes. Chris did it, she replied, when we were eight or nine. It's inspired by one of his Tintin comics, Flight 17. Yeah, one of the reasons they call Fromentan Tintin in, in Borgen is because... He's a famous cartoon character in France. Mm. Okay, Tintin. I, I guess the French pronounce it Tintin. Mm. It's inspired by one of his Tintin comics, Flight 714. It is beautiful, I said. She nodded. Yeah, she said, it is. His mother gave it to me when she was clearing out his stuff. I looked at it a moment longer, fascinated by the intricacy of the pencil work. In its attention to detail, though not, of course, in its style of subject, it reminded me of our miniature paintings of the sort one would find if one ventured around the corner to the Lahore Museum or the National College of Arts. They've made mention of that, that um, National College of Arts is quite close to where these two people are sitting. Mm -hmm. And there were lots of girls outside there. And uh, kind of an old man with a beard was just was just staring at the girls. <laughs> the idea that he's disapproving of them because because they were wearing short skirts or not wearing proper muslin clothes. <laughs> Erica led me outside to their roof terrace, a private eyrie with a spectacular eagle's eye view of Manhattan, and introduced me to her parents. Her mother was sitting at a table tennis table that had been converted into, uh, been converted with four place settings into the venue for our dinner. She held my hand, said hello, and then, still holding my hand, added approvingly to Erica, Very nice. <gasps> Behave, Mum, Erica replied. Her father stood at a grill, placing hamburgers onto plates. It was apparent from his demeanour that he was a man of consequence in the corporate world. As we took our seats for the meal, he lifted a bottle of red wine and said to me, You drink? He's 22, Erica's <laughs> mother said on my behalf, in a tone that suggested, So, of course he drinks. I had a Pakistani working for me once, Erica's father said. Never drank. I do, sir, I assured him. <laughs> Thank you. You seem puzzled by this. Can you see the other device of talking always about you? Because it, it involves us, yeah, doesn't yeah. it? it? It's the way we see Pakistanis and Muslims. And yeah, we so thought that on. they don't drink. You seem puzzled by this, and not for the first time. Perhaps you misconstrue the significance of my beard, which I should in any case make clear. I had not yet kept when I arrived in New York. In truth, many Pakistanis drink. Alcohol's mm. illegality in our country has roughly the same effect as marijuana is <laughs> in yours. Moreover, Interesting. not all of our drinkers are Western-educated urbanites such as myself. Our newspapers regularly carry accounts of villagers dying or going blind after consuming poor-quality moonshine. That's kind of really bad quality whiskey that's brewed, that's brewed at home. Indeed, in our poetry and folk songs, intoxication occupies a recurring role as a facilitator of love and spiritual enlightenment. What? Is it not a sin? Yes, it certainly is. And so, for that matter, is coveting thy neighbour's wife. Her... Okay. One of the Ten Commandments that Moses gave to Jesus was saying, Thou shalt not covet the, thy neighbour's wife. It means you should not fuck your neighbour's wife. Mm. So he's pointing out that why are you in the West surprised when we Muslims drink, when you in the West, with your Christianity, you drink are as well? No, no. 
covered thy neighbor's wife. Fuck the neighbor's okay. wife. So he's saying, well, in the same way that we That's forget about our religion, you forget about yours as well. Mm-hmm. It's coveting thy neighbor's wife. I see you smile. We understand one another then. <laughs> but I digress. I was telling you of my first meal with Erica's family. It was a warm evening like this one. Summer in New York being like spring here in Lahore. A breeze was blowing then, again as it is now, and it carried a smell of flame-cooked meat, not dissimilar to that coming to us from the many open-air restaurants in this market that are beginning their preparations for dinner. The setting was superb, the wine was delicious, the burgers were succulent, and our conversation was for the most part rather pleasant. Erica seemed happy that I was there, and her happiness infected me as well. I do, however, remember becoming annoyed at one point in the discussion. Erica's father had asked me how things were back home, Mm -hmm. and I had replied that they were quite good, thank you, when he said, economy is falling apart though, no? (laughs) Corruption, dictatorship, the rich living like princes while everyone else suffers. Solid people, don't get me wrong, I like Pakistanis. But the elite has raped that place, well and good, right? And fundamentalism. You guys have got some serious problems with fundamentalism. Oh. 